Welcome everyone to part 3. Now we have to get the player to face the camera. The face camera direction button in the puppet settings menu does not work. It will look a little something like this. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. So to get the player to face the camera, we have to use a tag and a look at rotator. First, reset your scene and go to the camera rig. Open the microchip on the cube that's the furthest from the other two cubes and place down a tag. Name this tag whatever you'd like, but I recommend something that relates to facing the camera. I'm going to name it Camera Look At. Once you're done naming it, don't do anything else with the tag. Go back to the puppet and place a look at rotator in the camera microchip. Bring up the look at rotators menu to start adjusting the settings. Max out the rotation speed, rotation strength, and the overall dampening. Next, go to the look for tag box and press up or down on the directional pad to scroll through the list of tags you have made. Find the name of the tag you placed in the camera rig. Once you do that, take a look at the arrow pointing out of the puppet's body. You want to have the arrow face behind the puppet. To face behind the puppet, I recommend turning on the grid and moving the arrow backwards. This will ensure that the puppet faces accurately. Since that's done, you know it's time to give this a test. Success! Now let's create the reticle. Most people think you can't put the reticle in the middle of the screen for accurate shooting. Well, I did too, until June of this year. <laughs> Exit play mode, reset the scene, and go to the camera microchip. Get out a text displayer and place it down. Here's where we'll decide what our reticle is. If you click Lady Lex UK's website link in the description, shout out to her, you'll be taken to the page shown on the screen now. Go down to single color icons and click that link. Here, you'll be able to choose an icon that'll represent the reticle. I'm personally going with the subtract sphere. Enter the name as shown on the website. After that, you can personalize the reticle however you'd like. I'm going to turn off the text box, border, and shadow buttons. Next, go to the alignment section and switch everything to the middle or center. Then, go to the settings section and turn on always on top. Be sure to adjust how big or small you want the reticle to be. Once you're done, connect the result port or whatever button you use to activate the aim to the start text port of the text displayer. Now let's see how this works in play mode. This works fine, although the transition between views could be a lot smoother. Let's fix that real quick. Exit play mode and go to the keyframe in the camera microchip. Open it and go down until you see two arrows. These arrows will determine how fast you aim. This could be useful for things like, I don't know, upgrading the draw speed for shooter games. I'm going to increase the power up and power down arrows to 0.2, but feel free to experiment. Once that's set, let's try it one last time. Perfect. Now I forgot to mention to connect the aim button to the power port of the look at rotator. Don't forget that. 
I hope you guys aren't having too much trouble. And if you have any questions or concerns, be sure to let me know in the comments section. And if that's all, man, I'll see you all in part four.